Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlogs Daily Classic. Today, thanks to Joshi, we're going to be going over Suffocation's Effigy of the Forgotten on cassette. First, though, here's the CD that Dan Seagrave signed and even drew me. My own Suffo Monster, which was very nice of him. This is from 2015. Uh, it was all I had in my van. I wasn't even thinking like I should grab something for Seagrave to sign. Luckily, I had my Suffocation CD on me at the time. So, fuck yeah. Got Effigy signed with my own little monster. But that was because I didn't have this, the actual case. The case was at home. I used to carry a CD binder with me which is very stupid because if somebody breaks in and steals all your like steals your cd binder you're left with just a bunch of empty cd cases and it fucking sucks i've been in that situation where like i've had over 500 cds stolen and yeah you don't want to ever be in that situation where you're just left with 500 empty cd cases it's just a fucking bummer but we're here to examine the rotten carnage records reissue supposedly in celebration of the 30th anniversary of effigy of the forgotten i don't know if it got another vinyl reissue this year but it got a tape reissue through this new label from peru um, this is also has the 1990 demo on it. Now, I had the original cassette tape. It was towed with my 1987 station wagon, R.I.P. Old Bear. That was a trusty steed. But one thing, aside from a lack of under-exclusive license from Roadrunner Records, which is, you know, like right here on the Immolation reissue, like under exclusive license from Metal Blade Records. I normally look for that. Like, uh, like my hypocrisy tapes I've yet to go over yet. Pretty sure they're bootlegs, but at the same time... Fuck. They're nuclear blast like and they have the nuclear blast logo and everything but um i'm pretty sure these are russian just based on their ninth they're, they're both 1997 cassettes but like here we have you know the 92 the 96 i really i like how they're numbered they have bonus tracks but, you know, you have that official Nuclear Blast logo. So it's kind of like, huh, what the fuck? But then, Apostrophe Records is the label that put these out. So, you know, I didn't do my research, but it does have a barcode. I don't know, but I do know I could show you a, a legit bootleg. Something I actually, like, I, I know it's a bootleg. Because somebody, like... They were like, yo, that label's fucked over a few friends of mine. I'm not trying to cause any drama, but, um, yeah. This is a bootleg, obviously. Or, I mean, like, a reissue, but I was told this was a bootleg. I don't want anything to do with that. I don't know if it's true or not, but, like, you know, it was kind of pointed out to me, like, yo, like... Like, they even said, like, hey, who gave you that? I was like, oh, uh, fuck. Uh, that sounds bad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm not even going to mention the label's name. But I, I hope, you know, they got paid at least. Crown Waits the Immortal, it's, it is a classic demo, you know. It's one of those, like, I don't want to sleep with the devil, but, you know, 
a regular tape copy of this probably costs like fifty dollars maybe more and I do like when people make bootlegs that actually follow the original cosmetics even if they're just taking a CD and dubbing the songs which is the case here as soon as I saw this was a model 77 pro tape I was like like they got me because they didn't show it was a model 77 they showed you know it had all the legit information and the legit J card that the demo from 92 had for the echo if you've ever seen like the official like this is like what the official tape looks like and shit this does not but you know again I'm still stoked to have this demo on cassette. And I have the demo compilation officially and Nest Pep officially. So I'm still supporting them. And Nest Pep on cassette through Extremely Rotten. So even if this ends up being 100% unofficial and a boot. I've still supported Suffocation so much with this release. I have so many, t all my Suffo shirts are mostly effigy based. But it all comes down to how sick this sounds on this reissue. Because I love the way the vinyl sounds. Like, the vinyl sounds fucking fantastic. But my buddy who snagged this for me, it was $38, which is gnarly. But the label's from Peru. And their lineup is fucking crazy. Like, it's one of those things that just, like, look too good to be true. But I, I don't know. So I'm trying not to judge. I'm just happy, you know, to have Effigy back on cassette. But if it does sound, you know, wonky or anything... We always have the LP, so it's all good. But my buddy did warn me about the demo. He did say the demo is rough, and I just assumed that, period. Because the 90 demo, it's rough regardless. Like, it's a 1990 demo from Suffocation. But again, like the artwork is a lot darker but, you know, it is what it is. You get an extra promo photo, so that made me happy. All right. Daily Classic, Suffocation, Effigy of the Forgotten. This is the Rotten Carnage Records reissue. Again, do not know how official it is. Whoa.
good. <laughs> Yo, this sounds way better than my original version, which just sounded like a wet blanket. In the best way possible, though. Like, the reason Skeleton Proof Tank's grief sounds the way it does is because of Effigy on cassette. It just had that wet blanket sound that we wanted, but this is very fucking punchy and it sounds great. And here we go. Just a little skip, it's still good, it's still good. All right. We don't wanna get it. But it's kind of weird though. Normally, this would be your A side. But here, this is the A side. But the Suffo monster's still not centered. It's kind of weird, but no big deal. I'm grateful to have it on cassette, and in a year of gnarly reissues, like, this label reissued Winters into Darkness and stuff, and, like, I definitely should have got a copy, but I have the original on vinyl, so it's like, yeah, but still, I have this on vinyl, too, but I love the way it sounds, well, I always love the way it sounds on cassette. I'm definitely interested in, you know, getting to the demo and everything, but just when it comes to brutal death metal, you can't go wrong here, folks. Especially if you're new to, like, brutal death metal and you don't want to just, like, dive into, like, something gnarly. Because there's a lot of, like, gnarly brutal death metal when it comes to, like, cover art and shit like that. But, like, you have bands like Pyrexia, like, with, you know. In internal bleeding. There's a lot of bands that, like, you know, uh, I forgot about some of their early cover art. Still, you know, it's nothing, like, worse than Cannibal Corpse. Like, you know, if for some reason that shit bothers you, you know, like, I know there's some people out there that, I don't know, they, they, per they actually, like, buy the censored Cannibal Corpse covers and shit because they have, like, kids. And I, trust me, I, I get that shit. I 100% understand, because I have nephews. And trust me, I don't want my nephews going through my, like, Pissgrave LPs or, like, my Last Day of Humanity records or my Forensic, I meant my Discord records, Discord Mexico records. But... Then again, I have, like, Were Goat posters, there's a Last Day of Humanity poster back there, there's Cannibal Corpse posters everywhere. I don't know, my room's not really meant for, you know, my nephews to play in, but Suffocation's Effigy of the Forgotten, you know, it's a 90s death metal classic. I shouldn't even need to make a video, but... We have it on cassette now here at Vital Vinyl Vlog, so I wanted to give it some shine because happy Dirty 30. Happy 30th belated birthday to Suffocation's Effigy of the Forgotten. And as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Hails.